This is Algebra 2, Chapter 6, Section 1, in which we will be performing operations on functions. Okay. The idea is we're going to be putting functions together in different ways. So we're given a couple of functions here, f of x and g of x. And they can ask us, with those two functions, to do a lot of different things. First off, they're going to ask us to add the two functions together. This notation, f plus g of x, means the same thing as f of x plus g of x. And it's not really distributive property, but it's close enough that you can think of it that way. So f of x plus g of x, put in what f of x is, put in what g of x is, just bringing those things in to substitute in. And now it's just collect up terms because it's addition, it's a piece of cake. And we get x squared plus 8x minus 4, just collecting up the terms that are there. If they ask us to do f minus g of x, that would be f of x minus g of x f of x, plugged in, minus the g of x. Notice the parentheses so that I remember that the subtraction applies to everything. Now just collect. x squared, 5x minus 3x is 2x. Negative 2 minus negative 2 cancels out. Okay f times g of x would mean f of x times g of x. So f of x, the stuff that we know for f of x, times the stuff that we know for g of x. Multiply those things together, and I just distributed x squared times 3x, x squared times negative 2, 5x times 3x, 5x times negative 2, negative 2 times 3x, negative 2 times negative 2. And then all I did was collect up terms. And when I collect up my terms, I get my final answer, 3x cubed plus 13x squared minus 16x plus 4. And then finally for these, we have f divided by g. Well, by now you've probably figured out that that's f of x divided by g of x. So we have the f of x function on top, the g of x function on bottom. We would try to factor, but factors of 2 that subtract to make 5, there's not any, so we can't go any further there. But we do have to throw in this extra catch. X cannot be equal to two thirds. If we say, if we had x equals two thirds, we would have a problem down here. What you want to do is put the bottom equal to zero. So three x minus two equals zero. Solve that for x, and that's the value you cannot have. And just like we did earlier in the year when we found restrictions on domains, that's still in play. So those four operations are pretty straightforward. It's just doing basic algebra, plugging and chugging and collecting. There's another operation that takes a little bit more work. And it's called the composition operation, composition of functions. <clears throat> the idea here is you use the result you get from one function to then evaluate another one. Okay. You have to work out one part of a problem, then use that answer to work out another part to get a second final answer. Now there's two different ways that the notation is written. One can be f circle g of x or it can be written as f of g of x. They both mean the same thing. First work out the g function. 
the inner function, the second function. Then use that answer to work out the outer function, or the first function in the bracket here. Okay. And they're going to throw this at us in a couple of different ways. They're going to throw this at us when they give us the functions in point form like this. And then they're also going to throw it at us where they give us functions like we're used to seeing them. And we'll deal with both cases one at a time. So here we have, they want us to do function f composite with g, f of g of x. Well first we have to evaluate g of x. If x is 9, g gives me 4. Now if I plug 4 into the f function, 4 is now the new x, I get a final answer of 7. So 9, 7 is a point in the, com in the combined function. 9 gave me 4, take that x and go up here and find out what the new y would become. When x was 4 to begin with, y was 3 in the g function. Now take that as the new x in the f function. 3 gives me negative 2, so I end up with 4, negative 2. Basically the idea here, guys, is we're cutting out the middleman. 4 tells me the answer is 3, and then 3 tells me the answer is negative 2. So I can go straight from 4 to negative 2. 3 gave me an answer of 10. If I plug 10 in as the new x in the f function, 10 gives me an answer of 8, so my final point is 3, 8. And then finally, 2 gives me an answer of negative 1. Negative 1 gives me an answer of negative 5, so my point would be 2, negative 5. That's F circle G. Okay. Now let's do G circle F. So we're going to start with F. <clears throat> when x is 10, we get 8. Now that's my new x to look at in the g line. And there's no x equals 8 point anywhere in sight, so that point goes nowhere. 4 gives me an answer of 7, so now I look for an x equals 7. No luck. 3 gives me a negative 2. I look for a negative 2. No luck. Negative 1 gives me negative 5. I look for a negative 5. No luck. So G circle F does not exist because nothing that comes out of F fits inside of G. And it's a matter of just trying to piece it together. You just have to focus on what you're doing and you can handle this. Now let's do it the other way, the way we're used to seeing functions. Okay, F circle G of X. Well, that means F of G of X. Well, what is G of X? G of X is X minus 6, so they're asking us to do F of X minus 6, putting this stuff where G of X was. Well, last chapter, we did this kind of problem. We plug x minus 6 into the f function. Everywhere we see an x, we put an x minus 6. Okay. Now, guys, this is reduced to an Algebra 1 problem that we know how to do. x minus 6 squared means x minus 6 times itself. 
distribute that out and then collect up. F circle G is equal to X squared minus 12 X plus 38. G circle F on the other hand what does G circle F mean? It means G of F of X. Well, what is F of X? F of X is X squared plus 2. So we're doing G evaluated here. We put X squared plus 2 wherever there's an X in the G function. So I took that X out and put X squared plus 2 in its place. Combine the terms, x squared minus 4. So that's our G circle F function. Now it's important to know that in most cases, it's possible or on occasion that it can be, but generally speaking, F circle G is not the same as G circle F. In other words, it's important to know that order matters when you do composing functions. Make sure you work in the correct order. F circle G or G circle F. Start from the back function and work your way forward. Work your way, start from the last one and work your way back to the first. So we dealt with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And then we dealt with composition. Uh, fairly straightforward stuff that, other than the composition part, you've really done before. Uh, if you had any questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in to ask, and we'll see you in class.